Hello, dear friends. Here we are at Kardec Radio, 11 p.m. Our program to nourish our souls. As all programs at Kardec Radio, our goal is to really nourish our souls, strengthen ourselves, to fulfill our the will of God on earth, the goals of progressing for immortality, to immortality. And today, it's all about healing mediumship. It's chapter 18, The Faculty of Healing. But before we get to the chapter, let us not forget that we were asked by Emmanuel in the last chapter to stay awake, to be assured that we are in the school of self-improvement. And let us not underestimate the lessons and remember that we need to cherish each opportunity to serve. You know, when we are working with health and healing, if you go to medical school, for example, or psychology, uh, the school of psychology, you are going to see that most of the time we're talking about illnesses to understand the mechanisms of healing. It's, it's funny to say it, but there is a two two-way road for healing. There is a twofold, I meant, twofold pathway, which means one is the healing because there is this harmony, but there also there is the healing prevention. Prevention, we can prevent issues. So when we're studying about health in general, we are also in need of evaluating what to do to avoid issues. You know, as a neuroscientist in the field of pain, we often talk about pain, chronic pain, and when you study in psychology or in medicine, dentistry, you're always talking about illnesses, diseases, etc. But the focus is health. The focus is healing, but not everybody is ready for it because many people cannot handle the lack of harmony to contribute to the, the betterment of people. So when we talk about healing, the first thing that comes to mind is, are we ready to understand the things that happen that will make us lack health in general, and I say this mechanistically speaking, we, in the Spiritist literature, learn the whole nine yards about the lack of harmony, the disharmony, the lack of health to understand how we adjust ourselves. Observe Andre Louis series, for example, from Not Solar, to when life goes on. Is he telling us stories about the angels? No, he's saying, look, this is life on earth. This is life on the closest spiritual zones related to the earth. And this is life a little bit superior to that. That's it. The focus is on boosting in us how to get out of trouble. So he needs to talk about trouble. And it takes maturity to be able to work on this field. You cannot work in the field of health and healing if we cannot handle the understanding of how people get themselves in trouble. So when we're going to read this message today, he's going to talk about the issues pertaining to the practice of healing mediumship. Are you ready? Because he's not gonna talk about the, the pink side of it. And I say pink in the sense of like the flowery one. He's gonna talk about issues. And this is a menu. And it takes maturity for us to understand this. You know, I've been to circles of spirituality like spiritualism, etc., where people 
when I talk about the angels, the higher spirits, the, but hello, we in spiritism, we are talking about the real life. And life on earth is still filled with this harmony. So when we practice healing mediumship, the number one thing to pay attention is, if you want to promote harmony, we need to know what this harmony is. We need to know. It's like physicians. You go to the physician, the good physician is going to promote preventative measures as well, but they need to understand how this harmony installs itself in the body in order to help promote harmony. And it takes maturity to do it, okay? So let me say hi to the friends who are here so we can talk about the chapter written by Emmanuel. Melissa, welcome, Melissa. Welcome, sunshine. And welcome, Sol. How are you, friends? Jailton, how are you, my friend? Dulce, how are you? Raquel Bakeshi, Nora Brasil, how are you? Andrea Torres, Rihanna, Lisa Teles, Karina Alice, how are you? Cintia Oliveira, welcome Cintia. Juliana, how are you? Lívia Moraes, Malu Brochado. You know, if you go to the website spiritist.us, Malu, you're going to find references regarding groups in Philadelphia, okay? Rudy, present in this moment. Ready? Emmanuel, chapter 18th of the book, Mediumship and Atonement. He titles this chapter, Healing Mediumship, the Faculty of Healing. But he begins by using a big no. He says, not only should the faculty of healing remain guarded against cash payment in order to remain intact, but also rid itself of negative gratifications to which the healing medium must renounce, so as to not have such faculty eroded by reasoned passions which begin at the first signs of excessive personalism. Pause, 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 pause. Let's go back. He says, the first statement he says about healing mediumship, and people are like, he's gonna tell about a recipe, a secret recipe. This is a medium, high spirit, working with the Christ. And he's telling us about the main problem, selling mediumship. In the Gospel According to Spiritism, there is a chapter. I don't remember the number, so I'm, I'm browsing here to tell us about it. Chapter 26, Give Freely What You Have Received Freely, The Gift of Healing paid prayers, merchants from the temple, mediumship free of charge. Why does Kardec in 1864 publish this book? Talking about this in chapter 26, dedicating a whole chapter. And then Emmanuel in 1986 comes to us to say in the first statement that you can work on healing mediumship, but you cannot be paid with money. But there is much more than payment in regards to money. He says, negative gratifications. What is it related to? Our personalism. So I may not be paid financially, but then there is prestige. Huh? There is a VIP treatment. Cannot. Melissa is saying this chapter is so interesting for me. I never understood the transference of pain 
from one spirit to another and without any warning or permission. Why this why does this physical phenomenon happen? What is the purpose? I ask because the sick person or the sick spirit only gets better for a short period of time and the medium feels other people's pain without knowing how this exchange works. So again, what is this purpose? I'm not, Melissa, I will explain to you in a minute, okay? Please hold on to that question. When I finish this chapter, we'll be able to go back to your question. But thank you for asking this. Hello, Adilson. How are you? How are you, Daisy? So, first statement by Emmanuel. We need to remain ourselves guarded from being paid financially with money. But also, we, the healing medium, cannot, must renounce negative gratifications. What is it? Things that are related to our passions, to our personalism. Mm, people start treating ourselves different, but we allow it. Right? Mm -hmm. Should not. It's on the medium to allow people to treat them just alike. Look at Chico Xavier. He never accept, accepted um, VIP treatment. He was always very grounded, real. Always seeing everyone, helping everyone. Of course, he's not at the level of Jesus Christ. But Jesus is our model as well, as he was for Chico Xavier. And uh, we've never heard that Jesus gave preference to people who were rich, gave press preference for people who were healthier. On the contrary, he was always seen amongst people who were troubled, etc etc and he was constantly warning about everything negative gratifications he's saying because he's saying negative gratification sunshine he's talking about there is an inner reward but there is an external reward which is about fame related to excessive personalism okay when people start being treated differently It is indispensable to know, he says, how to forget the poisonous wine of flattery, the boastful propaganda, the dangerous elixir of flattery, and the approval of others as spiritual pay. Ah, so he defines spiritual payment. Aha, uh -huh. we may not be paid financially, but then we accept people flattering us, saying, you're such a good person, you're so loving, you're so kind. When people say that, we say, thank you, but you know everything comes from God, right? Boastful propaganda. Isn't that amazing? Boastful propaganda. Whoever, whoever proposes to help the sick must know how to breathe by staying in sincere humility. Sincere humility. Balancing each moment in the determination to serve. Sincere humility. I can't help it but to think of Chico Xavier. He was a real deal. He really humbled himself and balanced himself. And, and the secret is here to balance ourselves in service. But usually we don't do this, right? There is a moment in which we feel like I've done too much, and I've seen people who spend their whole lives going to a spirit center, practicing mediumship, giving passes, and then when they are in their retirement years, they feel like now it's their time to give a break. 
and they say, now I'm gonna take care of myself and my family. I'm gonna stop working so much for the benefit of others. But they forget that at the end of the day, there's only one law, the law of service, the law of love and charity. You cannot stop complying with the law. I cannot later on in my life become selfish. And I say become, quote unquote, stay in selfishness claiming that I've worked a lot. And you know, I've seen cases after cases that people who did this, they had strokes, they had cancer, Alzheimer was triggered. But those whom I know who kept and keep themselves true to the work, even though they are in their 70s, 80s, 90s, they are healthier than everybody else in their age range. So, that's humility. Yes, I cannot walk as fast as I were, as I did when I was young, because now I'm older. But I keep myself humbled by that impediment, and I keep working those lower, though in different positions of work the intensity may vary the roles may vary but we don't stop as our friend daisy reminded us today there is a message in the book living spring by emmanuel that talks about it that we better be caught up by death in action working than in the illusions of a, a break, in the illusion of a break, because there is no break when you do the good. If we don't do the good, what are we doing? Evil. Selfishness is evil. It hurts. To think of your family first, and then the universal family is called selfishness. That's not beautiful. Not for us as a spiritists, Christian spiritists. It is not beautiful to say, I need to take care of my family. That's why, that's why you're selfish. We need to take care of our family and the universal family. Because when we are in need, we want the universal family to help us. So it's our turn to stand up for ourselves and think. If you live in a state in the United States that doesn't have spiritism, it is on you to put this first cell together. And do not give excuses. Because if you are living in the luxury, in the luxury of reading your books in your home, but there is the whole state in darkness in terms of the lack of the knowledge of spiritism, it is on you to light up that light. We cannot be in the comfort zone only thinking about ourselves. It's not enough for us to keep it only to ourselves. And then Emmanuel says, in order to heal someone, we need to bring the heart as an overflowing vessel of love. One who truly loves finds no occasion to complain. Listen to this. The heart of the healing medium needs to be an overflowing vessel of love. And in that regard, there's no complaint. So you help people and you keep helping, helping, helping. Oh, but these people, well, we keep helping. Because it's not us. We're just 
the instrument, like this pen. Imagine if this pen said to me, Oh, Vanessa, I've already written too many pages. Please stop a little bit. I'm going to say, Pen, can you please keep writing? I need to write the end of the story. And the pen is going to say, No, Vanessa, I'm tired. I've already written too many pages. This is us. We cannot tell God, Oh, God, I've already helped many people. God's going to say, Hey, I need you as my instrument to help others. Can you just allow me to use you? And when God operates on us, there's only overflowing love in us. And that's what it is. Remember the pen. Be an easy pen, huh? obedient as this one, because it's Kardec Radio's pen. <laughs> it's Kardec Radio's pen. That's why it's a good pen. I'm just kidding with you, friends. But overflowing vessel of love and understanding our responsibilities before the divine physician If you want to effectively heal, keep silence, learn, work by honoring the servant position of all whom Jesus conducted to you. Who is the divine physician? We are no Jesus. On earth, it's Jesus. Right, friends? I see an overflowing vessel of love here at Kardec Radio today. <laughs> Beautiful hearts, friends. Understanding our responsibilities. I didn't know we had responsibilities to attend before Jesus. Did you know? Many people don't know. People think when they are healing mediums, that they are the manager. They are neither the manager nor the physician. <laughs> oh, you guys so adorable. We all love it. So, responsibilities, you know? Yeah, we have responsibilities before Jesus. The divine physician. So he counts on us so we can learn. Be silent. Why does he say keep Silence. Be discreet. Because there are people who heal and start telling stories. Oh, I healed. And there are people, unfortunately, who are now keeping track of the healings that come through them. I know some healing mediums that are trying to keep record, the record of it all. Discretion is a must in mediumship. Be discreet. Be discreet. Discretion. We never, we've never heard of Jesus counting the numbers of people he healed, right? So why should we? Think about this. In this message, he's giving us the recipe not to fail and help the rich and the poor as someone who knows that excessive abundance or stifling lack are equally diseases that we must help. Mamma mia, this part of the message is so striking, such a revelation. He says that richness is excessive abundance and that is a disease in itself. And so many people want to be rich, right? To attract diseases. To attract disturbances. Emilio, read the book Money by Emilio and we're going to get to know. If Jesus the Master said it's easier for a camel to go through a 
a needle, the hole of the needle. Then for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God, I guess he was saying, it is a hard task to be fulfilled. Abundance, when it's excessive in our hands, it's a test. It's a trial, maybe an expiation. And many are saying it's a disease, like misery. Like misery. I know many of us here, we are helping those who are poor. But don't forget to help those who are rich. Because if we help those who are rich to stabilize their minds and hearts, we will disappear with poverty on earth as well. So we need to take a twofold action in our dissemination of the good. Hmm? There are many people who are millionaires, billionaires, and they don't know how to lead their lives. It's very complicated. Praying for them would be charitable. Praying that they find equilibrium, balance, to know what to do with the, the resources to help others is also charity. So, healing mediumship begins in the mind. Support friends and adversaries, the happy and the sad, those who are great and those who are not so great, as one who understands the valuable workshop of repair and elevation on earth. So he's saying healing mediumship is about supporting, helping people in whatever condition that they have, as long as they need help. Let us recognize that all honor belongs to the Lord. All honor belongs to the Lord, of whom we're nothing but imperfect servants. Let us recognize that all honor belongs to the Lord, of whom we're nothing but imperfect servants. We wish every medium knew, especially the healing mediums, that they are serving God. We would rarely, if ever, be boastful about ourselves. Do not deviate from the dependency of the eternal benefactor. Do not deviate. So he's asking us, be dependent on your relationship with the Divine Master. Look at the people who are ahead of us. Their humble attitude. They dedicated every thought, every feeling, every work and action to Jesus the Master or to God. They've never taken action based on themselves. And that's one of the biggest mistakes of many healing mediums. Because they are tempted to believe that it comes from them, that they are more special, and they become gods on earth, almost like semi-gods. And once we feel that way, we are in synchronicity with bad spirits that will dance in our minds making us believe that we're so good so good that we become the sole authority of it all that's why we work in teams that's why Chico Xavier always worked in team hmm? always because it's in the balance of the team that we are gaining equilibrium. We are managing ourselves in contact with the whole group. By moving our own resources to the benefit of those around you, let us be sure that 
we will be healed in our turn. In the end, for the victory, the real victory of the spirit in whose light the monsters of penury and vanity, ignorance and pride will no longer be able to reach us. So he calls monsters of penury, vanity, ignorance and pride. They will no longer be able to reach us. So let's summarize. He says, first, number one, never charge for it financially, monetarily. Two, do not allow yourself to receive gratifications related to your egotism, like sexual favors, right? Like special treatment or uh, little gifts here and there. He says, do not poison yourself with flattery, propaganda, right? This thing, the best healing medium is coming to town. Right? And then, boom, we fall. Dangerous elixir of flattery and approval of others as spiritual pay, so do not receive spiritual pay. Be sincerely humble by balancing in service. Open the heart as a vessel of love, overflowing vessel of love. Let us recap daily our responsibility before Jesus, our divine physician. Help all indistinctively. Support everyone. And recognize that we're just serving the Lord of life. And cherish your dependency on the eternal benefactor. It summarizes for us the recipe for healing mediumship, the success of healing mediumship, okay? So now I'm gonna go back to the questions. Jailton is asking a question and I'll go to Melissa's question, which is more elaborated. Jayuta is asking, what do you say about most of the American mediums who charge for their services? I don't say anything, Jayuta, but the gospel according to Spiritism says, okay, what does it say? Chapter 26, chapter 26 is about free mediumship, and it says... Sorry, friends. Free mediumship. Quoting Jesus. Restore health to the sick. Raise the dead. Help lepers and cast out demons. Give freely what you have received freely. Matthew 10, 8. Paid prayers. Mm. God does not sell the benefits he grants. Why then would someone who is not even the benefits distributor and who cannot guarantee their obtainment demand payment for a request that might not be answered? Answered, hopefully, right? Chapter 26 of the Gospel According to Spiritism, Kardec answers to us, it's a no-no, period. There is no, but no is no. Why? Because it doesn't make sense to charge for something. We cannot guarantee it doesn't come from us, right? Then Melissa is asking us about this. When people, as mediums, they start feeling the pain of others. Well, I'm not going to say this is a healing mediumship, Melissa. Because healing mediums not necessarily feel the pain of others, okay? 
they overflow in abundance of vitality. That's a different type of mediumship. Some people call it uh, incorporation. We don't call it incorporation. We, we call it speaking mediumship or, but we feel it. There is a type of kinesthetic type of mediumship. There are so many different types. It's mediumship, not necessarily it's healing mediumship, but sometimes you are picking up on the, the vibratory field and the spirits that are obsessing the person. And then once you channel it, the person feels better, but it stays with you and you channel, it's rescued by the good spirits. So we would say that's something that is a red alert for somebody who ran to educate their mediumship and live a better life, plus the commitment that they made in the reincarnatory plan to help others through their mediumistic abilities. By working in a disobsession meeting with discipline, simplicity, and, and, in, and in, in so many ways being anonymous to the public, because the people don't know what we do. It's invisible to the general public, but there we are being of help in terms of the rescue work of these entities that are that are making people be sick because they're sick as well the spirits okay i'm not so sure melissa tell me if i did an answer to your question and i'll be able to repeat it and be clearer okay let me know please because your question is very important as well okay jailton thank you so friends in this message almost at the end of the book mediumship and attunement we begin the message in a very mature way saying work on it but do not accept payment or spiritual payment emotional payment and never give up on doing the good do not select to whom you're going to channel a pen doesn't select if it's going to be used on a paper of this color or that color an expensive paper or a cheap paper if it's going to be a napkin that i'm going to use the pen to write upon or not the pen is used and doesn't ask where it's going to be used we need to be that obedient in the hands of the divine benefactor as Emmanuel says, the divine physician that connected to be used in whatever occasion is needed. How are you feeling regarding this message? Is it too strong or is it just exactly what we needed? Hopefully the second one, precisely what we needed. To adjust ourselves right I agree with you sunshine and look around sunshine you see that those who were allowing themselves to be flattered where are they now we need to watch out if we don't align ourselves sooner or later we won't be standing up so there is a lot of food for thought Thank you, Melissa. Thank you, Cynthia. So let us pray, shall we? Let us pray that we align our mediumship, my friends. It's not simple. We cannot, we cannot expect perfection, but we need to expect alignment. Okay? Calibration. This message, calibrate ourselves with your loving hearts. Let us pray and feel the joy. Oh God, thank you for warning us through Emmanuel, guiding us through Spiritism, and encouraging us to fulfill our part, as simple as it may be. May we be useful in your hands, and we understand that all the good that comes 
through us comes from you. So thank you for not allowing us to believe that we are better than anyone or that we are self-sufficient regarding you. We know that we depend on you and that feels good because you are love and we love being loved by you. And we are growing in your love as we feel your providential love, your kindness, your encouragement in the presence of our guardian angels. Please protect all of our homes, our lives, and forgive us for moments in which we don't know any better. And as you give us a new opportunity, we would like to try it again and again to improve ourselves always and fulfill your will of love wherever we are planted. And so be it. Thank you. Hello, Nina Dui. Hello, friends. Thank you, friends. Let us rejoice because tomorrow there is another beautiful chapter. Mediumship and attunement. Right, Rihanna. You're right. If we let ourselves be flattered, the message is not heard. That comes through from us. God must be felt through every message. Thank you, Rihanna. Thank you, friends. And until tomorrow, God willing, in the next 24 hours, what's the exercise you may be asking? I forgot. What is the message for us? Huh? Let's go straight to the bottom part of it. Do not deviate from the dependency of the eternal benefactor. Feel your dependency on God and enjoy it. That's the exercise in the next 24 hours. Big hug to you. Until tomorrow, God willing.